with an outstanding reputation on both sides of the Tasman, star Kiwi trainer driver Josh Dickey has called Australia home for the past couple of years. I caught up with Josh following his commitments at Club and Angle tonight to discuss the move. Well, Josh, great to catch up with you. We're driving here at Club and Angle for Ricky Olchen, and that association goes back four or five years. Yeah, well, probably um, probably about that. Uh, my partner Sammy Kilgour, she. Um she, she'd known Ricky and the Elchin family for you know quite some time, but um, you know back that four or five years ago, um, Ricky had taken Tough Monarchs in New Zealand. Um, he competed in the New Zealand Trotting Free for All in the South Island, and then he um, he shipped him up to the North Island where we were uh, for the End of Dominion series, and um, stayed at home with us, and um, that's where that association grew. And um, the following year, actually, Ricky sent the horse over for the the same. Um, you know, New Zealand Cup meeting, um, and actually uh, got me to drive the horse in the in the free for all. And, and you know, like Ricky and I have, um, you know, got to know each other quite well through all that. And um, you know, last year Ricky brought a team of eight or nine horses to um, to our place through the Breeders' Crown and Vic Bread series. And yeah, like uh, they're just great people. All the Elchins, um, you know, um, they're just you know, very very good horsemen. And um, you know, it's just a pleasure to really be driving his horses here tonight. Josh, no luck tonight with your two drives, but do you enjoy driving on a track like this? Oh, I do. It's um, obviously don't get to compete here too often. And, um, you know, like it's a, probably the biggest track in Australia, really. Um, you know, you, the, the speed sort of, they, they're just a little bit different to what you're used to on, say, you know, your thousand metre tracks. Um, you can really feel them pick up the pace. And, um, you know, it's quite exciting and, you know, very different. And, you know, we enjoy it. Josh, about 18 months ago, you surprised many, including a lot of people back home, making the move to Victoria. Was it a tough decision or did you look at it as an exciting challenge? Well, it was extremely tough, um, you know, obviously leaving home and, um, you know, Dad and I had, um, we'd formed a, a great partnership training horses and we had a lot of success, but, um, you know, there was a, an opportunity come up um, with my partner, Sammy, she, she had a property um, in Melbourne and we just thought we, you know, we're at a good age to try something. Home's always there. Um, we can always go back whenever we like, and um, you know, we just we bit the bullet and, and had a crack. Really, was it also a case, Josh, where it may have been, it's now or never? Basically, yeah. Um, you know, we're sort of in our early thirties, and we we just decided that you know we'd give it a go. Um, we didn't expect it to be easy. It's it's been pretty challenging to say the least. Um, you know, going from we were pretty well established, you know, especially driving. It was quite easy to get drives at Auckland and to starting out. It was basically starting from scratch, like you're a junior driver. And um, yeah, that's been the tough part, really. Um, it's, you know, it's taken us a while to get going, but, um, you know, things are starting to pick up now. You love your sport, and certainly Melbourne is one of the sporting capitals of this particular country. And, of course, you love your cricket. Yeah, I love the cricket. I, I really follow the BBL. Um, it's quite exciting, the T20, um, but I'm, I'm a rugby union man at heart. I love my Chiefs back at home in the All Blacks. Um, but, you know, especially at the moment, the basketball, the NBA, I love, I love all that sort of stuff. Um, I'm probably just a sports fanatic. I'm happy to, you know, sit there and, and even get to, you know, live matches if I can. I, I, I just really enjoy it. All right, you love the big bash. No sitting on the fence. Is it the Stars or the Renegades? Look, I like the Stars. Um, I've, yeah, been a big fan of the Stars. I've... To be fair, I, I, I probably give the Australian sports teams a bit of stick, but I, I really admire the, the Australian cricket team. Um, you know, players like um, Glenn Maxwell, he plays for the Stars. So I just admire the all-round ability these guys have. Um, they're just extremely talented sportsmen. And making that move, Josh, it was important to get some success on the board straight away, and you did that. Yeah, we did. it. Um, you know, the, the first training win probably took a couple of months. And, you know, looking back, we just, when we got here, we didn't have, you know, the racing stock to go straight on the track. It took us a couple of months to get them going and, and whatnot. So, you know, we got that on the board and, um, you know, the driving wind sort of slowly started ticking away. But, you know, I'd, I'd really like to be out there more if I can. It's, um, you know, the, it's really hard to sort of get going in Victoria. There's a number of top talented horsemen, which, um, you know, you're competing with them not just on a weekly basis, it's a daily basis. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a competitive pool, but, you know, it's um, something that we've, we're still working at. Yeah, I think without a doubt, Josh, Victoria does boast the strongest pool of drivers and trainers. 
For sure, yeah. There's and there's a lot of underrated drivers I find and trainers. Um, you know, um, to be fair, in New Zealand, like this, they, they'd probably slip under the radar. But uh, when you're competing against some of these guys, you take notice of um, you know how talented they are. Yeah, David Aiken certainly picked up your talents. You enjoyed Vic Bread's success with him with He's a Hammer. Yeah, he was a lovely trotter actually. I, I really enjoyed that that win. Um, yeah, Ake sort of you know had a lot of confidence in the horse on the night, and, and I got a really good run to be fair. He, you know, he trailed them and, and got a good run up the, the fence, and um, yeah, it really made my job pretty easy. But again, you know, David Aiken, you know, say no more. He's one of the legend trainers of the sport, and you know, I've, you know, haven't driven a lot for Ake, but um, you know, just to pull on his colours, that was you know, it was a great night. And how many horses would you have with Sammy under your, under your care? Uh, we're doing about 11 at the moment. Um, we've you know, got a good number. It's a pretty good number for us. Um, you know, there's only the two of us here in the morning, so um, you know, it keeps things pretty busy for us with um, obviously the other farm jobs. And if we're nipping off to the trials or races, it's, um, they make up for big, busy days. Yeah, you mentioned your father, John. What a wonderful association as far as success-wise you had with him. Yeah, it's quite unbelievable, really. Like, um, I remember when Dad and I started, um, you know, we've, I think we had about 15 or 20 odd horses, and they were, you know, okay sort of horses that we had racing first. And I remember Dad saying about a couple of them that, you know, these are probably VR ones that could win a few. And, um, you know, a horse like, um, wouldn't be known over here, but a horse like Millie Sampson, she came out and won three or four, like on end. Um, Voluntad, she she won about five or six in a row for us, and from there it just really grew. We got a lot of support from owners. All of a sudden, we gone from 15 to 20 to sort of nearly 30, and well-bred stock. We were, we were getting good clients for the sales, and um, yeah, as I say, like success breeds success, I think. And um, yeah, we had a great run, Dad and I, there um, you know, over those years. Josh, what would be Dad's strongest point as a trainer? Oh, Dad's got a lot of patience. Um, he's got a very good eye. Um, he's very interesting because he could tell you if a horse is right or, or a bit off. Um, you know, especially watching a horse race. You know, I always admired that about Dad, and um, he's got a great, um, great knowledge about horses' feet and you know how, especially trotters, how they should be shod. Um, but one thing about Dad, he's got the all-round game. You know, he probably gets a lot of too much credit for you know being a trotting man where he's I believe he's an all-round man you know um, and um, I say that with the greatest respect he's um, he's had a lot of success with trotters but he's just as good with the pacer. Old Town Road unplaced behind Kanga on Friday night at Alexander Park how's he trucking towards the Auckland Cup? Yeah well he's just had a few bumps in the road since the um, since the slot race really and he just probably hasn't quite had the rub of the green um, just a couple of niggles here and there last night he missed away he made his job a bit harder but um, talking to dad today and you know he really wants to see a lot more improvement out of the horse he was you know a little bit disappointed but um, we know how good the horse is and um, you know if he turns up Auckland Cup night how dad thinks he will he, he'll be a really big chance I think. Josh as a 15 year old you wanted to leave school and dad said you could if you had a job to go straight to and he organised a job of a lifetime for you? Yeah, well, funny enough, um, you know, because my parents were separated at the time and um, we sort of kept it a secret from my mum for about six or eight months that I had left school. Um, she, yeah, Dad just said, oh, we'll tell her at the right time. And um, yeah, it sort of worked out good, but Dad was always adamant that if I was to leave school, I'm to go to, you know, the best. and. Um, you know, we had a couple of names in mind, and Dad did leave it up to me in the end of it. Um, Tony Hill, he was an idol of mine growing up. Um, he's an absolute genius, in my opinion. He's just a great guy, and arguably the best driver New Zealand's seen. And um, yeah, I was very happy to go and take the job at Tony's. There was a special moment during the Inter Dominion, based in Victoria, back in late November, early December. A heat of the Inter Dominion at Geelong, and Tony asked you to take a drive for him. Yeah, he was staying with us at the farm at the time, and um, oh, I get on great with Tony. Still, he's he's you know he really is still a mentor of mine, and um, yeah, it was it was great just to be asked for the opportunity. You know, I know how much Tony loves and thinks how much of the horse you know actually is, and um, to be able to you know, drive for him in a, you know, series like the Inter Dominions was a 
you know, really big privilege. It was a bit unfortunate what happened, you know, with the horse after the race, but, um, you know, the horse will bounce back and, you know, he'll be back at the end of the year. Yeah, built for Brian's been a half an neck behind Just Believe, and we know how just, good Just Believe is. Oh, he's a super trotter. He needs, he's really um, come a long way in the last 18 months, and Greg Sugars and Jess Tubbs, they're great friends of um, Sammy and I, and, you know, we've enjoyed their success along the way with him because he's, you know, he's taken out, you know, the biggest trotting races here in Australia. Turning up to work for the first time with your idol, Tana Hurley, he must have been a mixed emotions, excitement, nerves. Well, it was hard, really, because I was sort of used to working with um, Dad's team. He sort of only had 14 or 15 back in Cambridge when he was back then, and first day at Tony, so I think we were working, you know, 55 odd horses, and uh, I think we had nine or 10 track work, you know, fast work drives. It was a bit of a um, culture shock, but um, I loved every minute of that place. Um, you know, Tony and his wife Suzanne, they did nothing but look after me. You know, I just owe them a lot. They were, um, they really did help me a lot along the way as a junior driver. Josh, 12 Group 1 wins, 5 on this side of the Tasman, and a horse by the name of Speeding Spur must be very special in, in all that mix. Yeah, well, he won 9 of them, so um, yeah, he's just a super horse, and um, I, I, he was probably, he probably run second in another five or six of them. Um, he was just an amazing animal. Uh, you know, I think I'll be lucky to sit behind a horse like him again. Um, when he, as an early four year old, he, he was just an amazing horse and unfortunately broke down. And I just don't believe he was ever the same after that, but he was still good enough to win five group ones after that. And, you know, and that sounds a bit silly, but he, he was a monster as a four year old and he, he won the Great Southern Star as a four year old. And, you know, I, I think it'll be, it's quite a tough job for a young horse to do that and you know it just really showed how good he was back then. Josh it's been great to catch up with you hopefully we'll see you in action on more than just the odd occasion here at Club and Angle. I really appreciate it cheers.